Hello, this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net, and today is Thursday, May 1st, 2008. The market's closed. The S&P 500 finished with a gain of just over 2%, closing uh, just above 141. So the uh, 140 level that we've been looking at was completely obliterated today, and I think the short sellers were really feeling some big pain in here. So this market continues to move higher along the path of least resistance with the uh, daily time frame with the 50-day moving average. Uh, advancing so again you know this 50-day moving average that you generally want to trade in the direction of it when it starts to flatten out it becomes neutral and then trend is higher here what I've been harping on is the uh, bigger picture here on the weekly time frame and this still does offer the potential for uh, further trouble ahead but until price action confirms that theory what you have to do is fo stay focused on the shorter term time frames and look for evidence that the, of, of who's in control, buyers or sellers. Yesterday we saw that this market came down on the 10 minute time frame right to this trend line. Today uh, the buyers came in right at the open and stayed with this market all day long right up to the close. There was really very little selling pressure in here as I think once it got above that 140 level and in particular when it took out the VWAP from yesterday uh, and today. So this is a, a two day VWAP, this blue line. You can see it had some trouble reaching above that, but once the buyers took back control and the average price and the and price got above the average price that it traded at, including yesterday's Fed session, that's when the uh, buyers really came into this market and pushed it higher. It cleared uh, the, uh, the the high areas of the um, uh, Fed meeting yesterday and uh, again putting pressure on the short sellers so it's always good to be aware of all you know these little trend lines and and uh, and that sort of thing but with a direct rising five-day moving average the market uh, you know held above the 138 level uh, and yesterday I said if it can't stabilize at this 138 and a half area then we would look for a test of 138 and 137 but again when the buyers come in that strong right from the open and then they're able to push above a critical level like they were here then the uh, buyers really, uh, you know, took control and uh, short sellers capitulated. Uh, so we've got, you know, it looks like this market could be heading for the levels we've been talking about here for the last several weeks, which is the December lows uh, at about 144, which comes into uh, the same area, just, uh, you know, around 143 and a half, 144. Um, that's also where we see the declining 200-day moving average. So clearly on the daily time frame, the buyers remain in control here. And uh, they've, they've uh, once again shown that they've got the upper hand uh, with today's action. The Russell 2000 was up $1.36 uh, today, getting just about 2%. The big level in here continues to be $73 a share. Uh, we're coming up to that level once again, and we've got higher lows uh, as the market approaches that level. It's possible we could push higher and then go on to test the 200-day moving average in this market as well. So... Uh, you know, that's, uh, we've got this trend line that possibly could offer resistance. But again, support resistance, uh, you know, moving averages, that sort of thing are only known after the fact whether they're going to bring about selling. And, uh, you know, clearly in the Russell 2000, uh, you know, yesterday we saw that uh, this market was able to hold above that $71 level. And, uh, you know, we basically wanted to give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers with a rising five-day moving average. Again, I was very surprised that the market was able to be this strong. I think most people were. But, uh, you know, right from the beginning here, buyers were in control. It tested that VWAP a couple times. And then right in here is where it had its trouble at 72.10 or so. And that 72.10 area, that's about where we had the two-day VWAP as well. When the buyers took control, again, it was higher highs and higher lows. Then we had more of a, you know, you know neutral uh, range-bound market late in the day, but still very constructive uh, uh, session for the Russell 2000 as it comes up to this important level that's uh, you know been important on the uh, uh, weekly time frame for quite a while now. I, I, you know, I've gotten some emails saying, "Well, do you think that this is going to be the this is the blow off top in this bullish move?" It may be and it may not be. What we have to do is not try to predict where a market's going to top, but listen to the message of the market and and don't impose our beliefs on the market too strong because you have to be flexible in your opinion and be aware of any an oper any uh, situation that could develop. And clearly, you know, when the buyers took back control here, if you were still short, it didn't make sense, just as much as you know, buying the breakout past 140 
uh, or 140 right in here yesterday and continuing to hold late in the day didn't make any sense because it looked like, you know, it looked like the end of the world right here. But things change very quickly in the market, and you have to have a plan that's adaptable to these uh, changing conditions. The, uh, the big percentage gaining group today was the uh, financials up 3.65%. Uh, we'd seen that this trend line had broken about five sessions ago. The market's been holding above that. Yesterday I pointed that we have the 10-day above the 20, above that uh, now flattened out 50-day moving average. And I thought that, you know, we probably needed more time to consolidate in here, but the, that this group was acting strong. And now we're back above these levels here, too, this 27.40, 27.50. And you can see that the buyers are back in control. We've got some volume in here. And I think we could see a little bit further uh, upside in this market uh, as, uh, as there are a, a big group of short sellers in here who are now, you know, a lot of them have, have come in at these lower levels. But as this market has shown its ability to, to hold above 24.40, and then poked down through that 26 level once again, but then held above it. It's making these higher lows. And you can look at this and say, well, is this an inverted head and shoulders pattern? Or is this a uh, uh, ascending triangle? Either way, it's a bullish looking pattern in the short term because we've got higher lows and we've got this level of resistance that's been breached. Now, as far as potential upside targets go, this 200-day moving average is still pretty far away. So I think you want to be careful about getting too aggressive. If you're long in here, it makes sense to be long right now. Um, but, and you want to basically listen to the message of the market. When the market, you know, I think right now you want to look at this previous high. If this high right in here at about 27.10 or so uh, acts as support, then you want to continue to remain uh, bullish in here. Maybe you give it a little bit lower. It depends on your risk parameters and how you approach the market, which is why I don't like to tell anyone how to trade. You've got to figure that out for yourself. I just try to point out the market structure and, and where uh, you know key levels are, are being breached, like we have uh, in clearly in, in here for the uh, for the uh, XLF. So I think that this level probably at about 27.10, 27.15, that ought to be the level that first acts as support if this market can continue to add to these gains and squeeze some short sellers. Very short term, uh, you're looking at uh, you know the potential for resistance at 28. Price has memory; it wasn't able to get through that 28 level before, so perhaps that level will be uh, uh, a, a bigger level of resistance once again. And you can see when I backed it up on the uh, 120 minute time frame that it was. Uh, resistance, you know, a few times in here. So 28 might be an important level for this market. If it gets up towards that level and you're long, uh, maybe you take a little bit off or look for evidence of weakening. And, and you know, as it breaks down through these support levels, then you want to get out of it. So um, it, it acts constructive, though, in here short term. Longer term, you know, weekly time frame, it's still obviously a big giant mess, but uh, it doesn't mean you can't make money on the long side in here because that's clearly uh, you know the path of least resistance here on the you know on the shorter term time frame so uh, the Nasdaq 100 was up 3.1 percent today with its gain of a dollar 49 this market was the first one to really kind of breach its important resistance level at 46 uh, just about two weeks ago and the market came down and tested that level and it's just been super resilient uh, the, you know it's holding above this rising 10-day moving average blasted right through the 200-day moving average today. And those 200-day moving average, and, you know, when I draw this line here and, and these trend lines, that you know, the, again, the trend line was broken about three days ago. But when I draw these levels and these, you know, these, these lines such as uh, this prior level of support, or if I point to the 200-day moving average, they often act as a potential level of resistance, or, or they, they often act as resistance, so we have to look at them as a potential area where there might be sellers, but it definitely doesn't mean sell short. It means when the market approaches that key level, that inflection point that captures so many people's attention, that the proper course of action is to drill down to a shorter term time frame and see how the market behaves in that area. Well, yesterday we had a sharp sell-off from, from that level, but today, again, same story here, Buyers were in control right from the beginning, and it just blasted through those levels. The two-day level, it didn't even slow down. The NASDAQ was clearly the strongest right from the beginning, and just a fantastic pattern of higher highs and higher lows. So when we look at these longer-term areas that 
we think maybe ought to provide resistance, uh, you can't look at that and say, well, the value of the 200-day moving average is at, you know, whatever number it is right here. Let's take a look. Um, the 200-day moving average is at $48.14. So it doesn't mean you go in there and put in sell short orders at 48.14. It means how is the market responding at 48.14? Well, it got up to that level, consolidated a little bit right in here, then blasted right through it. So to sell short into that strength at 48.14 didn't make any sense at all if you're truly uh, you know, a trend trader. You want to look at potential levels of, of where there might be resistance. You want to anticipate what might happen in there, plan your actions, confirm it when price starts breaking down, and participate only you know, when the price action dictates.